it's uh it's been a busy week for everybody um and i'm sure you're you've been nonstop as well and uh, i just like to welcome everybody to our webinar today for cmt connect um our webinar today i know many of you were on the original covid webinar uh we did about a week and a half ago already with dr bach and we did mention the capture proof app and we had megan on in the beginning there but we really wanted to answer some additional questions that we've been getting and i just wanted to dive in a little bit deeper about the app and how to use it and, and what the benefits are so uh today's special guest is megan conroy who is the, the founder of capture proof um i believe you started this journey about uh in 2012 is that correct yes you got it yeah and um basically what we know so far is that your app is basically providing the visual biometrics um, in medicine and, and really kind of uh, progressing and, and moving the needle towards, you know, more efficient technology, communi communicating uh, between doctors and patients. And I know Allison Moore, our founder, kind of connected with you a few months ago, and we've been working on some other projects, and it just so happens that now with, with all of the rush to identify symptoms with COVID, that this kind of seems to be an ideal platform for that, um, which I'm sure it's not something that you expected. But um, yeah, so tell us a little bit. No, it's the silver lining of the global pandemic is yeah. everyone can see the benefits. Yeah, it's a, yeah. a crazy moment. So tell us a little bit more about your journey, how you got started, um, what your inspiration was, and, and how, how the app works. Sure. Um, so thank you so much for that kind introduction. Uh, we at Capture Proof are really excited to be working with HNF. And as you said, Allison and I have been discussing how we can expand um, the reach of research and have the ability for um, patients who might not otherwise be able to be included in, um, in both research experiences, registry experiences, and also just enabling the patient to best tell their stories. So capture proof itself, I have a physiology degree and studied uh, physiology undergraduate and really thought I was going to be a doctor when I grew up. Um, uh, but instead of going to medical school, I worked for big pharma right out of university. And then I um, was living in San Francisco, where I am now again, and uh, was coached and ran sales for a small startup. And we had an exit, and I like to say I got a sand bucket of cash. I think I had $38,000 from that sale, and it was in the mid-2000s. I thought I was rich, and I moved to Paris to get my graduate degree in photography because that's what you do when you're rich. And um, I started this journey to never look at a computer again was the goal and to go out and start to enable people to better tell their stories. Um, including spending some time in um, Zambia and looking at mother to child transmission of HIV. And all of my exploration of healthcare has led us to what we're really feeling um, at a minute level right now of access to care is one of our biggest challenges. And I had, I think it's fate that has brought me here in front of you. I, um, I do believe we're in charge of our destiny, but I also feel that Sometimes we get a little push from those above. And um, I feel really fortunate to be able to say to you that I've been able to amalgamate both of my passions of physiology, our body, that we heal, that we are this, this, um, this organism that has magic within us every day, every second. Miracles are happening within our body that we don't even know. And then in addition to that, um, my visual uh storytelling and the fact that i'm a visual person i'll if i'm telling you a story and you're my friend i'm always going to pull up my phone and start scrolling through pictures to try to show you a visual to share with the words that i'm sharing and i'm going to do that here with you here um and so i had the very fond luck of meeting a gentleman on a plane back in 2008 who was the head of research and development for cytori therapeutics and he was looking for a photography endpoint for a clinical research trial. And we ended up having 13,000 media files sent to us on DVD, and I needed to go in by hand and hand organize the 13,000 media files in order to show progress of these breast reconstruction patients 
um, in order to give them to the FDA for FDA review. And I just thought it was a crazy project in the many multitude of photography projects that I was working on. And then in 2010, I had the luxury to go take a year follow-up visit. I trained everyone how to push the button and how to capture these, um, these photos. But um, one of the women got married and she was on her honeymoon. And so I flew up to Norwich, England to take the pictures. And I asked the woman if she wanted to see her before and after. And when I showed them to her, she started to cry. And she said, I had no idea I got this much better. And that was the moment where I had every cell in my body start to move. You know, those moments that you have that like you feel every cell in your body. And I thought, oh my gosh, if we can make this data meaningful, it has power and it has real power. And since then, I have heard many patients, especially in the neurology space, say that they have had the experience where their doctors finally believed them. So, so many of us have had the experience that we have symptoms that are happening that are, um, are episodic. They're not showing up with us to our doctor's appointment. And we get there and we try to use our words to describe whatever that visual symptom is. And our words aren't doing us good enough. And the person's looking at us like we have three heads. And having the ability, I believe, to empower patients to clearly document their progress, to clearly document their journey, to clearly be able to tell their story, and also to be able to gather the information as it's happening, that's information necessary for providers to make decisions. And so what we've done is with Capture Proof is we've created a templated system that has the ability for a protocol to be put into it. And that protocol can be for a clinical research trial or it can be for COVID. And here we are as a startup, you know, just weeks from um, the launch and on February, or sorry, March 13th, we launched the COVID application because that is what our system has been able to do. And um, a few days later, we launched the COVID HNF partnership in order to help create this registry um, hopefully so that we can start to crowdsource data and help the community um, get the best care and figure out really what's going on. So I'd love to walk you through a little bit of visual if you're cool with that. And so you can, let me share my screen and please go ahead and stop and ask questions. And I know we have a group here, but I do like to have things be a little bit more um, conversational than not. So if anyone does have a question, don't hesitate, raise your hand, put something in the chat, reach out. We're happy to, um, hold on. are you able to hear that music? Is that too loud behind me? Are you hearing music at all? No, I don't hear any. <laughs> My piano music is still going on back there. I sure it's <laughs> so if you go to the Capture Proof website, um, you will see this woman here um, and what we have for the HNF uh, community is the ability for um, them to sign in right with an invite code. Uh, so that invite code, if anybody, I'm a capture proof person through and through, so if I needed to remember anything, I always take pictures. So don't hesitate, take a screenshot of this. If you wanna take a screenshot, grab your mobile phone and take a picture. But what we're enabling for you to do is to just document health. And if you aren't having symptoms, that's okay. And that's great, actually. And if you're not having symptoms, what we ask for you to do is to sign up to the, um, to the site itself and to go through to set your baseline. Because what we do at Capture Group is we respect the idea that medicine is a study of patterns. And that what we want to understand is your personal pattern, your personal visual biometrics, are interesting and perfect for you. And the question is, have you deviated from your standard and your expected normal? And that's what we're trying to determine here. So when we're looking at, um, at capturing, we ask that you don't wait until you get symptoms. We're hoping no one gets symptoms. It's the struggle with capture proof is it's the product that you build that you really don't want anyone to ever need. Um, so here we are in this 
um, situation. Uh, from that, um, what we're able to capture within Capture Proof isn't only um, the COVID-19 as we discussed. So when we're talking with HNF and when we see the bright future that we have together is this ability to decouple medical care from both time and location. So telemedicine that's done like what we're doing now is a streaming video service, but everybody needs to be at the same place, at, at some place at the same time. So the time is still a synchronized aspect of it. And what Capture Proof does is it breaks the bond of both location and time. So you capture things as they happen. Maybe it's a sit to stand test. Maybe it's a walking experience. Um, you know, maybe it's actually just a documentation of different variants that you're looking for. Or maybe it's an activity of daily living that you were not able to do before you had a new medication. And now you're able to do this new activity of daily living. And you want to document that in a journaling aspect. So when we talk about Capture Proof, we talk about this visual journal and the idea that it's the fastest way to communicate. Visual is our fastest form of communication. And so with Capture Proof, when you sign up, you're going to initially be put on a wait list. Um, we are going to have this wait list automated uh, shortly. Um, I'm being told by tomorrow. So if I trust tech, I'll tell you by the end of the week. Um, so if you sign in the first time and you don't see anything there, just um, come back in again within 24 hours, you'll be uh, invited and passed through the uh, wait list. And then the second time you sign in, you will see this button. It's a single button, um, time for capture. And that button will walk you through a variety of questions and also ask you for specific images. And I'm gonna walk you through each of these steps in just a second. What we're doing here is what we want to know is if you are diagnosed with CMP and you can invite your, um, your family members or your friends who are not CMP, um, di not CMP patients, but are, you know, want to support the community. And what that will enable is for the patients to actually have, uh, for us to have a patient subset and a, a CMP subset and a non-CMP subset. So it's not necessary for you to have CMP to utilize this HNF-sponsored um, COVID tracker. Uh, we do ask you whether you have been diagnosed and we'll be anonymizing and um, grouping that data so that we can start to delineate some insights from that information. Uh, if you have no symptoms whatsoever the first time you go through, you have a very short questionnaire that you see here. And then you have what we call media prescriptions. We have two photos and a video. Um, the two photos are of each of your hands. And while um, I, I do understand that that can be a challenging uh, photo for you to take, so you may need a care partner to help you out to take those photos with you. Um, if you are able to do it, we actually had a brainstorming session last week about how we could make that easier, where we are actually talking about maybe having a camera that is verbal, that responds to a verbal cue. It's, um, it's still in our lab because it's a long lab time, and so we're getting a lot of blurry images when we're using it. But um, we were also talking about um, having the ability to use the, the layer. So we're looking at ways to kind of circumvent challenging data to be captured and to increase independence with the app. In addition to that, um, we have a video of five deep breaths. And so the benefit of taking five deep breaths can be a meditative benefit of you just documenting where you are. And what we're able to take out of these and look into is for the hands, we're looking at the puffiness of your fingertips. So if you see here, um, this video is focus on me in the background too much, but um, the puffiness of your fingertips were over 70% water as an organism. And so the puffiness of your fingertips really can go to your hydration level and can give um, some clarity around um, oxygenation as well. And addition to that, the five deep breaths, we're able to listen to how long the aspiration is of inhale and exhale. And we know that with COVID-19, one, um, one of the most worrying symptoms is when there's a shortness of breath and there's a struggle to breathe. 
And we would obviously suggest that you get medical help if you ever have any struggle of breath and any struggle to breathe. But what this can offer you is if you are having to go get help, is structured data that you can share with a provider so that they can actually see the progress that's been happening. Now, if you have, you are exhibiting symptoms, it's obviously a longer checklist and your uh, risk is increased. So here with no symptoms, maybe we'll ask you every three days, maybe we'll ask you every day. Um, if you do have no symptoms and you just wanna set a baseline, you could do a couple and then you could wait until symptoms set up. You don't have to continue to do something daily that you don't want to, but it will always be there as an option for you to open up, click on that button and have it walk you through. Now, with the exhibiting symptoms, we do suggest that you at least daily go through and monitor what's going on. And what we hope for here is that we're going to give you the data that your provider will want to know around um, these symptoms. So when you're going in, um, the very first time you go through, this is where we're going to ask you whether you're a CMP patient or not. So you're going to go through just a regular capture proof disclaimer. Uh, we are sharing this data back with um, HNF, and then you will be asked if you are diagnosed with CMP, and from there, um, we'll find out if you're feeling fine or if you're feeling symptoms. And based on those, if you're feeling fine, you go through that short list where you talk about whether you're isolated, whether you have been tested, whether you have known anyone um, who you're either know someone or have had contact with someone who has been tested positive. We do ask for some specific biometrics, and these biometrics are optional. You can put them in, you don't have to. Um, some questions on here are optional, some are not optional, but all of these biometrics are optional. And the biometrics that we're asking for are weight. Um, we're asking for uh, your pulse ox, which is your oxygenation level. You can buy a um, pulse oximeter on Amazon for about 20 bucks. And this is a really um, important number that's being tracked within the COVID, um, the COVID system. And then if you do have a pulse oximeter, it gives you your um, heart rate, your beats per minute. Um, and then we're also asking for blood pressure in case you might have a blood pressure cuff at home. So again, all of these are optional, but they're there in case um, you want to start to have a baseline and then see if anything's changing from your baseline. Uh, the media capture, as we discussed, it will lead you through the media capture as well, which is your left and right hand. And then what you'll see in your subsequent pictures is we'll actually overlay your initial image in your second, third, and fourth image so you can come in and line up your hand the same time and time again. And what that just enables is for the same information to get into the field and for the doctor to be able to have the same data. You see, I hope you can see here the face overlay on um, the breath. And if you're doing this, there's on the lower right hand corner, there's a way to flip the camera around. So dependent whether a care partner is helping you, then obviously it's going to be the camera on the back of the phone. If you're doing it yourself, you wanna flip that around so the camera is facing you. Once you've done that adjustment once, it should open up the next time exactly to that uh, orientation of the camera for you. Um, if you are experiencing symptoms, like we had said, um, and these are small and I didn't, um, I didn't put them onto multiple slides because I see here that we're asking you how many days you've had symptoms, how many days you've had a fever um, over uh, 100.4. We're asking um, any sort of specific symptoms, whether you're worse or better, if you're having a cough, if your lungs hurt, um, and then giving you a pain scale around your lungs hurting and asking you if you've had any trouble breathing. The um, checklist is coughing, difficulty breathing, chills, two different fevers, um, and uh, fever over 37.5, that's listed twice, but then there's a fever over 40, um, those are in Celsius, sorry, 99 and a half, um, or 100 104, body aches, change in your appetite, tired, headache, sore throat, stuffy nose, runny nose, um, sneezing, and itchy eyes. 
there have been, I believe that we've actually added two there. One is loss of smell. Um, that was also added, which seems to be loss of taste and loss of smell um, is a symptom that are being asked about. And we also add GI um, since this was, was taken because we had seen an incidence anywhere from 5 to 20% where some GI activity, uh, GI upset is happening. Um, and then after you go through the myriad of questions, you're again asked for those same three simple visual data points. So each of your hands, the palm showing, so we can see the tips of your fingers. Try to tap the camera on your hand to set the focus. Um, we definitely want your hand to be in focus. And then in addition to that, the breathing. Um, from there, you're going to indicate whether you coughed on this video. And why you're doing that is, Hearing a cough can be very beneficial for a provider to start to route you in the right way. So we like to identify when a cough has been um, seen within a video itself. You're asked again those same those same biometrics: the weight, the pulse ox, the blood pressure, um, and then just just pushes you through to a reminder for the next time when it's in 24 hours and time for you to take the next set of information. If you ever wanted to go in and take information again outside of the time that you have, um, that you, you're scheduled, you can open up any of the lines within uh, your own personal chart. And you'll see just like it says if it were a text situation in the lower uh, portion of the screen, you'll see a way to leave a note there if you want to put any sort of specific notes in for yourself. And you can also just activate the camera and the camera will activate just as you see here, um, each individually. Um, so it's super easy to sign up. All you have to do is go to captureproof.com and use the code that is <clears throat> the h and code. Pardon me for a second. Let me just try to drink something. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> You can just use this FMQM3H. Sorry that it's a crazy code. Um, we have a whole bunch of uh, different <clears throat> codes that are on the system. So as we try to make things uh, very easy, like COVID-19, then it just disappears. Uh, so we're stuck with these crazy FMQM3H. But if you head there and go to captureproof.com, you'll just pick right at the top. It says, I have a code as one of the options. And you pick that and can go on in. Um, if you have any questions, are once you've downloaded the app, there's a contact support for app support. And you can just push that button and it will automatically call uh, support for you to help you get any sort of um, training that you might need. You might even get me on the phone. Sometimes it rolls over to me. So I can walk through some background, but I'd love to take any questions that we have right now on you know, the COVID-19 H&F tracker and what we're doing, if anyone has any questions or any specific data that they'd like to know. Yeah, we had a question on how you uh, share this information once you've captured it in Capture Group. How do you share it with your physician and how do you know that this is information or format that they can accept? Sure. Um, so let me pull that up. Um, that was, that's a great question. We do need your, maybe if I, ah, there we go. We, in order to share data with your provider on Capture Proof, mm -hmm. they do need to have a Capture Proof address, um, Capture Proof account. Capture Proof is a HIPAA client system which enables for doctors to communicate and hold patient data within the system itself. So when you are to electronically um, share this information with the provider, uh, this I in, is in each of the buckets. So when you open up your Capture Proof account, you're actually going to see, see here. You're actually going to have a bunch of different areas that you're tracking and that we're creating a timeline around. Maybe it's a gait analysis, and so we then have the ability to look at that gait side by side. But as you each open up each of those, 
there's a little I, and that can, that is how we share with a provider. It's our first time to do anything direct to consumer. Usually we've been provider pushing to patient. So, I mean, I'm the first to admit this is a little bit more clunky than we want it to be. We do anticipate having a share button for patients to just share their entire profile with a provider um, and also enable you to invite your provider with, say, an email or a telephone number. Okay. And, but right now, and this is on our website, if you log into Capture Proof, there's a help button at the top, and we have a wonderful tutorial uh, um, area that can walk you through a myriad of different things, because you may end up wanting to track more than even just your COVID symptoms on Capture Proof, and we can help you do that, too. Um, so when you go to that I, you um, look for, you add a provider, and you can either in, have an invite code, just like that FNQ invite code that we looked at. Each provider has their own code. Um, so that would be how you would do it. We are looking to also enable um, a report, a PDF of this data that can be downloaded. And so that's something that uh, will be coming out um, in, in short order. That's a great question. Is there, Is there any? Yeah. Um... Just lost my train of thought. Is there a way to, um, I mean, what are some of the benefits as far as like, in addition to clinical trials with CMT, is there a way that we can kind of replace some of our office visits with the, these, with this kind of, um, with this kind of information yeah. logging? Definitely. And what's exciting right now is that finally um, the payment system is happening so that it's getting interesting for doctors to start to think about creative ways to see their patients as well. And so what we have shown is through the capture uh, with the capture proof smart medical camera and the ability to, you know, get the consistent information time and time again. So this is um, a hand burn, a different reason to take a picture of a hand, but again, shows you what that looks like if you're going to have an overlay and have your hand come in and take that second picture. Um, and then for, say, incision sites after a surgery, capture proof has been used, and this just shows the comparative organization that enables a patient and a provider to see what's happened and how progress is going. So specifically in studies, capture proof has shown a 75% reduction of in-person visits for follow-up care. And for neurology itself, we just had data published in JAMA Neurology showing that, um, showing amazing results. Let me see, I can, I'm bouncing around, but it seems to be how the best talk. So, um, but we've shown for, um, for epilepsy was the ability to increase the accuracy of diagnoses by almost five and a half. And if you had a video alone, you just sent in a video, no text instructions, no anything, no h &P, no history, no nothing, just a video, your likelihood of getting an accurate diagnosis is 89.1, whereas your appointment without a video, your accuracy, um, your incidence of getting a correct diagnosis is almost uh, 79. Wow. And so you're really able to, this is where an example of, if you really can well tell your story, you really have the ability to see um, what's going on. Absolutely. We had a, a um, they're so their team assigned in the app what happens to the data. The data is being shared in uh, shared with HNF, and the data sits there for the patient to use as a journal to document progress and can be used in office visits if necessary. Um, so that is, the data still is stored uh, with HIPAA in mind, so it's secure, not at rest, and on the go, and it's encrypted um, and also has redundancies up. Um, we use Amazon Web Services and have a business associate agreement with them, but that's a great question. Okay. What about sharing within families? You know, what if I want to take keep track of my father in New York and his symptoms? Is there a way for families to share? each other's information? Yeah, right now we don't have, we only have the patient, um, the patient role and the provider role. So right now we don't have the ability to necessarily, there, there have been um, 
there have been family members that have signed up as a provider in order to have the patient um, when that's something that's really uh, interesting and necessary. Or, um, you know, we don't suggest sharing passwords, but there are different ways around it, of course. Um, over the past eight years, Capture Proof has spent a ton of time really focused on the science and the impact that photo and video can have in medicine. And every time we get a study back, it's got a better number around it than we anticipated from saving almost 99.9996% time to a diagnosis. This was one minute, 28 second video versus an average of two and a half days inpatient for that patient. Uh, and, you know, that's why we're so excited about the partnership with h &S, is that your goals align with Capture Proof's goals so nicely with empowering the patient, helping them get better clinical care, but also expanding the impact and the knowledge around research and having the opportunity to understand um, what's going on there. Let me pull up this question. Yep, you got it. How often should this survey be taken? So you're um, assess we're assessing your risk. And within that assessment of risk in this high pandemic moment, you'll either fall into an every 72 hour or every 24 hour window of being reminded to go in to take the COVID-19 protocol and follow through with your survey and the images. So based on how you answer those questions, Paul, you'll be either reminded through a text notification or a push notification if you allow for the push notifications to come from capture proof which we suggest you do um, it'll alert you and Estelle, you've been doing it for a few for a while now you yep. were an initial um, and so you're getting the alert the yep. email and also text notification that you're getting alert right I'll get the text reminder it's time to update your capture proof information. Um, and, you know, it, it literally takes two minutes if you don't have any symptoms, but it really kind of, um, you know, a lot of us are trying to like keep ourselves, uh, I guess, just busy and, 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 and it's, it's a good moment to just kind of sit down and like you said, you know, it's, even if it's a meditative five deep breaths and just to make those kind of mental points to check in on yourself and really ask yourself, how am I feeling today? Am I feeling any different? Um, so yeah, super easy to use and, um, and, and quick as well. Awesome. So what we were, we're really excited about is the idea that we can take these surveys and trend report them. So this is just a dummy slide to kind of show what we're thinking, but the idea that we'll be able to extrapolate information across the board and see what these, what kind of patterns start to show up. And within our surveys, we can actually identify um, scoring that can be done. Um, so maybe not necessarily for now what we're working with with HNF, but with what we're looking at in the future, having the ability to put these surveys together and have that data come through. We already talked about how we're inviting a doctor. And this is just to show you, this is a, a 12 year old who is running the app with her grandmother. And so she's able to run through and get a variety of different images that are um, taken from the face, looking at a variety of different aspects that are interesting for a specific, um, a specific provider. But also something that's very near and dear to CMT's heart is the sit to stand test. And so what Capture Proof is really excited about is taking actual data like this and making it objective and making it actionable, not only for the provider, but also the patient. And so what does that mean? That means that we like to ask you to do specific movements, and then we delineate these visual biometrics from these movements. So here, we have full machine learning where we're watching uh, the shoulder as you walk down the aisle. And um, I finally made this so the top is the shoulders and the bottom is the feet. And as you're watching the feet, we're looking at cadence of swing state, um, stand state, if there's any hesitation. And then we're really interested in the symmetry of your movement. So it was your right and your left 
matching each other or is one slower than the other. Um, and for the shoulders, it's the same. So from this 10 second video, Capture Proof actually pulls out 27 data points that are then able to be trend reported to look at the progress over time if we're doing gait analysis. In addition to gait, we're excited about how your range of motion is and how your movement is. So you can imagine even in that sit to stand test, looking at how far angle someone's leaning forward in order to be able to elevate themselves um, and delineate the effort necessary. This specifically is a range of motion of a knee that we're showing you here. We at Capture Proof identify skin. We're very interested in skin of all types and colors. And um, so that's why you're putting a towel over the other knee because we're actually identifying that his, his knee is skin. So if we had the skin behind it, we would get confused. But Capture Proof was put head to head with wearables on range of motion, which only look at the flexation, this movement here. Capture Proof gives you flexation, extension, the full total range of motion and how long it took you to do it and to a hundredth of a second. Wow. And so what we're really looking to have the ability to do is to give you again these visual biometrics and get objective data to start trend reporting to help you understand are you getting better? Are you not getting better? Are the side effects worse? The medication that you're taking? A whole myriad of questions that we ask ourselves while we're um, while we're you know managing uh, our health. So for Capture proof um, within the system itself, once you um, log in, you have the ability, you'll see two little squares. I lost a screenshot here. You'll see two little squares once you open up any of these, um, any of these media prescription as we call them. And if you have more than one, you'll see the comparative organization, which will even allow you to play those two video side by side. So you yourself can see if your cadence has changed or if your, um, if your arms are moving at a more um, expected rate or if, however it might be, if you're, if you're on track or if you're deviating from where your norm is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't, it's hard to think of um, a type of healthcare provider that this wouldn't benefit, right? Especially for CMT, I mean, we have, orthotists who need to get a really good grasp of your gait and not just while you're walking down a hallway in their office for three seconds. I mean, how are you going upstairs? How are you, you know, walking around your house or on, on uneven ground and, you know, just, just uh, physical therapy. There's just so many different ways that this can be really, really helpful for CMT, especially. Definitely, and having the ability for a physical therapist to give you an instruction of a movement that they want to do and enabling you to do that movement at home and get feedback from them as to whether you're doing it properly or not can be invaluable because all of us go home after PT and are have the best of intentions and then you forget, are you supposed to be at 45 degrees? Is it supposed to be at 30? You know, how, how are you supposed to be? And having that opportunity to also, um, if you uh, go to the Capture Proof site, I can show this. Let me see. Sorry, my desktop is like a working person's desktop. Is really no worries. Uh, it looks like mine, too. <laughs> but if you here in Capture Proof itself within doctors, orthopedics is a, a large area for us. Post acute care is a main area where Capture Proof has been. Um, utilized, but here you see this is an instructional media of a, a way that an exercise is supposed to be done and then the patient doing it themselves. And then you can actually see patient versus patient. So when you're working with PT, you could actually have an instruction of how you're supposed to do something and then see yourself versus that instruction and even do some, you know, self-correction to say, okay, I am leaning forward and I should be standing up straighter or whatever the that might be. Yeah, super helpful. Um, then we had a, we had another question here coming from Bruce. Um, he said he was trying to use Capture Proof on his iPhone. Um, he said it was not a. He tried to um, write in and it said it wasn't a valid email address, and there was some kind of delay with the photo. 
um, and the cameras. So, um, is there? Is there you can give um, the, the either send an email to help at captureproof.com and someone can reach out. Okay. Um, the other, depending on if definitely please if you are having trouble with capture proof or any other app if you can see if there is a um a software update for your phone itself sometimes there become the io the os on apple can change and then that can create bugs that happen okay um, but if there's no need to update your operating system and you're seeing some challenges we really appreciate you to reach out if you ever find a bug or you find that capture proof isn't working the way you would expect it to work um, we implore you to let us know because if you don't let us know, we don't have something trailing you to find out that you've had that sort of negative experience. We really have to rely on our, our users to reach out to let us know if something's mm -hmm. um, not quite right. We have had uh, an amazing amount of uptick and hundreds and thousands of patients um, signing up lately. So our servers are, are working to keep up and they're doing a decent job. but. The other thing that we've been running into is bandwidth issues with everybody home and everyone working from home in a way like never before. Um, sometimes bandwidth issues are really struggling to make things go. So um, okay. please reach out and we're happy to help with any challenges that might come up. Okay, and then Bruce, if you want to message us privately or afterwards, we'll be happy to kind of help help you walk through it as well. Um, and then we, I think we had a. Uh, Dennis here was raising his hand. I'm not sure if he's still on, but Dennis, do you still have a question? I don't know if he's still on. Okay, well, let us know, Dennis, if you still have a question or feel free to type it in in the, uh, the Q&A box on the bottom of the screen there. Um, Okay. All right, I think, I think we're pretty much good on the questions here. Um, do you see yourself adding more, you know, symptoms as, as more of the information comes in from COVID-19? Um, I mean, obviously this is not a tool to diagnose you, but it can really check off those boxes and kind of raise, oh. that, raise that red flag. So. Is this something that you're going to be continuing to add to? And Yeah, we're definitely, I mean, COVID-19 is a bit of a moving target still. Yeah. Um, there's a kind of a, there's a, a long list of known unknowns right now where, you know, people are making best guess, guesses. I mean, 14 days is, a, is, a, is based on science, but it's not mm -hmm. necessarily a proven number for exposure. Um, we've, there have been outliers of 27 days. So uh, really what we want to help is 20% of, they're saying 20% of the cases are going to be really heavy, definitely needing inpatient care and, you know, patients are getting on vent ventilators and being on ventilators for days and weeks. Um, but what we, what we're also wanting to do is to support that 80% of patients who are experiencing symptoms and are having hopefully more mild symptoms, um, get through it with a track of what's going on, but also support those patients who do end up having to go in and ask for um, more acute and, uh, and critical care. Yeah. Um, able to do so. So we're, we're trying to stay on top of it. Uh, capture proof has been used by 53 subspecialties across the hospital. Like you say, we we believe that a visual endpoint, you know, the doctor will see you, the doctor needs to see you. There are so many things that capture proof is more of a tool than a product where like a stethoscope is used to listen to the heart by the cardiologist and the lungs by the pulmonologist. Um, you know, we have cardiologists that want to see what your feet look like for swelling of the feet for pedal edema. Um, and, you know, we've had liver transplant doctors want to take pictures of livers when they're being harvested to see what the health is before they fly it somewhere. So it's been really fascinating journey to put the product, put capture proof in the hands of different patients who have different endpoints to look at and different mm -hmm. doctors who have different endpoints to look at. 
Yeah, well, you guys are doing some incredible work and I definitely encourage everybody to download the app and make sure you put the h and code in there because we will be, you know, moving along with this um, as far as research and clinical trials and, you know, h and is doing so much now with exercise and movement as medicine and we really want to, you know, empower our patients to not just give up because they're stuck at home now. We want people to find new ways to really connect with their, their healthcare providers. And, um, and we'd love for everybody, if your doctor's not on it yet, we'd love for everybody to send them an invitation and let them know about this. And the more patients that are kind of, you know, requesting this be the new standard um, of healthcare, you know, the faster that we, we kind of bridge those gaps there. So thank you so much. Yeah. We're really excited to be partnering with you all and um, applaud the hard and amazing work that you have done to this point and uh, really look forward to um, helping the HNF community best, best tell their stories yeah. um, so that they can get the best care possible. And we are right now giving 12, we don't charge patients, that's not something we do. Um, we are, our business model is with the medical professionals and right now because of COVID-19, we are opening up our doors and giving the product for use for 12 weeks away for free for your providers. So it's a great time to have them come on and Absolutely. Um, have a Yeah, this is the ideal time for everybody to be trying this product out and, um, and just seeing what it can do, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Same, same here. And good luck with uh, with all of your hard work that you continue to do. And uh, we'll be we'll be keeping track and, and staying in touch. So wonderful, wonderful. Wash your hands, everybody. And I touch my face. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm the same way too. It's hard not to. It is. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Take care. You too. Stay safe, everyone.